Okay, so so after calculating the potential from a uh, structure, so we have some ways to uh, transfer or transform this um, potential into a E field on a certain axis. Okay, so here it says suppose that a positive test charge Q move through a displacement DS from one equipotential surface to the adjacent surface. The work um, the electric field does on the test charge during the move is this one. Okay, so this is the work done, which is the uh, negative of the of the potential change. Okay, so this will be a Q zero times dV. Uh, dV is the potential change multiplied by the uh, charge amount. Okay, and then yeah, suppose the ch charge amount is positive and. Yeah, the, for the work done, we have this negative sign. So on the other hand, the work done by the electric field might be uh, may be written as the scalar product. Okay, so this is this is yeah, this is actually the um, the work done, and then the flow. This is the electrostatic force. So this is Q zero times E, and then dotted with dS, dotted with dS. So this is actually the the work done if you consider it as a force acting yeah, acting on an object and then move for um, distance okay so um, yeah so actually this is a work done this is also the work done so these two are actually the same so we have this one putting on the left side this one putting on the right side and yeah and actually we have the dot product here the dot product here so actually we have the magnitude, the magnitude of this one, so which is a Q zero times E, Q zero times E times dS, uh, dS, and then of course this is a dot product, so we need to multiply by cosine theta. Theta is the angle between these two vectors. Uh, this is Q zero, it's a positive, so Q Q zero E actually points to this direction, and t dS points to this direction. So theta is this angle. Okay, so we, here we have cosine of theta, uh, cosine of theta due to this uh, dot product. Okay, so here we can actually uh, cancel this Q0. Okay, so that's it. And uh, we can actually move this DS to the left side and then swap the left and right side. So on the left side we have E times cosine of theta, E times cosine of theta, and then after moving this one to here, so we here we have negative dV over dS, negative dV over dS. Okay, so actually this is a uh, derivative, uh, derivative of uh, uh, of the potential uh, with respect to this so-called S-axis, the S-axis, this S-axis. Okay, so this S axis can be arbitrary axis can be X, Y, Z or or, or other uh, axis in other coordinate system. Okay, so yeah, so here we can see this is a negative of the derivative of the potential with respect to the um, a spatial axis. Uh, and then on the left side we have E times cosine theta. Okay, what does it mean? The E times cosine of theta means the projection of the sorry. Uh, the po projection of the E of the E vector on this axis. Okay, so actually this is uh, E E cosine of theta. Okay, actually the magnitude will be like this, and then and then times the yeah the unit vector of the x s axis okay something like this so this is the projection projection of the e uh, on this x axis okay so and this is actually the the magnitude of it this is the magnitude of it the magnitude of a unit vector is one okay so this is the projection the projection of the e on the x axis okay so in such a way we we write this e cosine of theta as es es which means that e the e field uh, or actually the projection the projection 
呃、uh, ，of the E field on the S axis， 就是 E E field 在这个 S 轴上面的投移，呃，或者是 S 轴上面的分量 ，OK， 就是 E S。那这个 S 可以是 X Y Z， 可以是其他的 ，OK。And then actually this E S equals negative d v d s 啊 d v d s w h i c h is the potential， the derivative of the potential。Uh, with respect to x, and I take the negative sign. Okay, so here we have the uh, relationship between between the uh, potential and the e field along that axis. Okay, so yeah, so in such a way, yeah, we can make use of it. But before uh, trying to uh, work on this, uh, we try to extend this condition. This is only for one dimension, so actually this can be worked for uh, three dimension. So let's say e x equals negative d v d x for the x axis, and then also okay for the y axis, also okay for the z axis. Okay, so so actually if you don't like too much uh, notation, 不不不喜欢很多符号的话。那就三维，你就有三个式子，三个三个导数 ，OK， 那就是这样 ，OK。So actually in mathematics we can actually write these three formula just uh using one, OK, using this uh using this um upside down triangle, this upside down triangle, this upside down triangle is actually called a gradient, uh, gradient. Okay, so actually, recently, uh, the AI is very uh popular. So actually, gradient is also uh uh extremely important for the for the AI theory. Okay, 所以就是说呃，现在就是人工人工智能那些神经网络嘛，那你要训练它，它有一个算法叫做 gradient descent， 就是 gradient 呃 gradient descent。就是梯度下降啊，梯度下降。那梯度下降的意思就是，呃，它其实是为了找一个函数的最小值啊，找一个最函数的最小值。但如果你在高中数学啊，你你你蛮长，就是被要求去求一些函数的最小值。那那为什么我们要需要这样的算法呢？就是。高中找那些最小值的，因为它是一个单变数的函数，就比如说呃，它是一个什么 sin 什么的函数，或者是一个什么二次式，这样去找一个呃最小值或者是极小值。那在神经网络里面，它可能有几十万、几百万，甚至几亿个参数。那我们其实是没有办法去找出一个 c r o s s form， 说哦哪一个点是是最小值。那所以，我们只是用一些方式说，呃，我们透过改变某一些参数，让它哦朝上小的方向一直变下去，变到某一个程度，它就会比原来的状态小很多。那这是 gradient descent。那这个 gradient 也就是那个 gradient 是一样的东西的。OK， so actually this gradient in mathematics we can write it， 呃、uh, ， we can write it as a as a Yeah, uh, complicated. Uh, at least looking complicated uh, formula. So actually, the gradient in in Cartesian coordinate, 就是直角坐标系的话，呃，它是长这样的。那如果是其他坐标系的话，又有其他的的形式。那 gradient equals. So actually, this gradient is is actually a, an operator. 它就是一个所谓的运算就是一个运算员啊，呃，不，中文是什么？反正是一个 operator， 就是一个运算的一个符号吧。就是比如说我们算那个一加一，那个加号，那个加就是一个 oper 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 呃 operator 了 operator， 就是一个运算的一个符号了。我忘记中文是什么，有些时候运运算员好像是那个数字了，那所以。So actually, gradient is a is an operator. Okay. So what does it 
What does it mean? So gradient is actually like a partial, partial x uh, in the uh, x-axis. So i hat plus a partial, partial y, uh, j hat, and then plus partial, partial z, k hat. Okay, so actually this is a, an operator. Okay, so you, actually you cannot calculate what is a uh, uh, an, uh, an operator. 就是你沒有辦法問一個加號它等於什麼 因為你看起來它就不是一個完整的東西它這個是一個所謂叫做 of B Gradient of B 的話就是比如說是 Gradient of V 的話 它其實就是 Partial V Partial X 然後 I 然後 Partial V Partial Y 然後 J Hat 然後 Partial Partial Z 然後 V 然後就是 K Hat OK 所以這個就是 X 方向的分量 Y 方向的分量 Z 方向的分量 然後這個取個符號 當然這裡整個取個符號或者是這個會等於等於一個負的 so this uh, gradient operator will make a scalar view into a vector view okay so 它, 它, 它可以把一個, 呃, 存量的一個場變成一個, 呃, 向量場, 啊, 向量場。那它直角坐标是就是长这样的那如果觉得数学太难的话也没关系就是只是告诉你长这样那如果是它也可以 不同方向的偏微分但這裡就沒有引入這個偏微分就是它就是把它抽離出來就當做只有一個偏數這樣但是數學上正確的話其實是它是一個偏微分然後and okay. actually you can also regard uh, this this relationship and also with this this is the definition we learned before. Okay, when we learn uh, the definition for the for the potential, we know that v is actually negative of this uh, line integral, uh, integration of e dot ds from the initial point to the final point. Okay, so actually this is a an integral, and actually this one is a um, gradient. Gradient of v is. You can consider it like, like, like a three-dimensional derivative 就是你可以把它看成一个三维的一个导数三维的一个导数那这个是一个积分这个是一个积分那所以的话就是说 it's, it's, it's somehow like you take the derivative of v convert to e view and then you take the integration of e view and then become the, the potential Okay, so it is actually like the fundamental theorem. It's actually a form of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so it is uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. This is the 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 fundamental theorem of calculus. 後面會提到的像那種什麼高斯那個叫做Divergence如果你在Calculus 1裡面它就會告訴你說一維的那個Derivative跟那個Definite Integral 
原始你学 calculus 的时候 ，derivative 它是一个极限嘛 ，derivative 是一个极限，就是另一面的嘛 ，f of x 加 h 减 f of x 除以 h， 然后 h 是等于零这个这个呃这个极限嘛。那积分的话，它是 r a y m a n d 三，两个定义是不相干的，所以。那为什么我们去积积分的时候，我们可以用 antiderivative 去算呢？那是因为有这个 fundamental theorem of calculus， 才告诉你说这样做是正确的、啊、不然的话就就不行了，就是啊，我我一定要呃 r e m a n d sum 或者是怎么样。那对数学有兴趣的话，可以可以看看那个 Wikipedia 的描述。呃，如果。嗯，没有那么有兴趣的话，你就当做呃，这个是一个数学的一个符号了，就是一个倒三角形，那写起来就会比较帅气啊，然后全部哇，什么什么鬼东西这样。OK， 所以回到这里 ，So go back to here. So previously, um, we calculate the the potential generated by the charge disk, uh, on the z-axis like this, uh, like this expression. Okay, so actually we can make use of this, um, yeah, actually this, this uh, formula to find the E field uh, along the z-axis. Okay, so let's work it out. So here we have this, uh, we already have this result. Uh, so here we can have E z equals negative partial v partial z okay okay so in such a way uh, this one is actually a constant so we can just put it in the front and which means that we act we need to take the derivative uh, of this stuff of this stuff so yeah so this is this one is actually like z square plus r square to the one half power so if you take the derivative so which will be like one half and then z square plus r square to the negative one half power and then don't forget the chain rule which means we need to take the take the derivative of the of the inside part okay so if you take a derivative of this z square plus r square uh, with respect to z, then this one becomes uh, two times z, two times z, and then the derivative of r, r square, which is uh, which is zero because r square is a constant to z. Okay, so this is this thing is actually the uh, derivative of the first term, and then for the second term is easy. The derivative of z with respect to z will be one. Okay, so something like this. And then we can just distribute this uh, negative side into the parenthesis. And then also we can uh, cancel these two with these two. So finally it becomes... So finally it becomes uh, sigma over 2 epsilon naught. And then this is a negative 1 half power, which means that uh, z squared plus r squared uh, square root will go to the denominator and then uh, z is on top and then minus one okay uh, also sorry it should be it should be the yeah it should be it should be one minus one minus this stuff okay this minus sign goes to here so this is a positive one and this term will be, will be negative so it will be one minus z over this term okay so this is pretty much it and then you can actually compare when we try to derive E yeah, using the method in chapter 22 we actually get the same uh, same expression okay so yeah actually the same expression so which means that both way can lead you to the correct answer so so actually it's up to you to choose which path to go <laughs> yeah so for this part yeah the integration yeah so actually you need to do some yeah uh, if you uh, decomposition because uh, 
Mm, yeah, I think no. I think no. Actually, for this one, yeah, for the rain already generating the along the z-axis. So you just need to integrating this uh, de from zero to capital R. And for this one, you actually need to calculate the yeah the, the uh, potential potential upon p like this. Okay, so the integration is yeah yeah is not that difficult not that difficult. So you can come up with the expression of v, and then you take the derivative. So taking derivative uh, is supposed to be easy. So yeah, so it's up to you to choose. Maybe yeah, finding the potential first, and then take the derivative. Maybe take more steps, but every step is uh, easier than uh, finding the e field directly. Yeah, but of course it depends on the problem. Yeah, yeah. For some problem, maybe yeah, it's not easy to to really calculate the e field directly. Yeah, so. Yeah, so probably that in that case you need to calculate the potential and then take the derivative. Okay, so far any questions? Okay, so here we introduce another variable called the potential energy or the electric potential energy. Okay, just a damn way in the mind. Okay, so the electric potential energy of a system of uh, charged particles is equal to the work need to assemble assemble the system with the uh, particles initially at rest and in finitely distant from each other. Okay, 就是一開始的話全部電荷都在很遠的位置所以它沒有儲存任何的能量在裡面然後你就把它 放到一個狀態,那那個狀態的話就距離是有限的,那它們之間就會有力,那這個動作也需要做工才能夠完成。Okay, so for the two particles at separation r, u will be this is k times q1 q2 over r. Okay, so another uh, similar expression. Okay, so yeah, so finally I just summarize all the four um, formula with similar with similar expression. Uh, namely the Coulomb's force, the E field, the uh, electric potential and the potential energy. Okay. So the four variables. Okay, so here is set uh, the total potential energy of a system of particles is the sum of the potential energies for every pair of particles in the system. Okay, so yeah, so it looks like this. So this is a K, we can just put it outside. And then here we have a summation uh, when I is not equal to J, and of course. I and J is counting from 1 to capital N if we have N charged particles. And then here we have a Q, I, Q, J over R, I, J. Uh, I, R, I, J is the distance between Q, I and Q, J. So in such a way, this summation will have, uh, will have um, N choose 2, N choose 2 or this notation. Okay. So, so much terms. So, so, and actually, this one is like uh, n times n minus 1 over 2 times 1, which is, uh, uh, which is 2. Okay, something like this. For instance, uh, for instance, if we have, uh, we have, if we have uh, 3, if we have 3, and let's say if we have uh, n equals 3. So I, J, and then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, which will be like, I and J cannot be the same. So this one is cross, this one is cross, this one is cross. Because this one is uh, 1, 1, I and J are equal. And this is 2, 2, 3, 3, I and J are equal to each other. So in such a way, we can only have this one, this one, and this one. So we have uh, actually three. So we don't need to 
don't need to count for the repeated case because uh, this one and this one are the same. So yeah, one and two, two and one are the, are the same thing. So actually, we just need to count half, uh, half of the matrix, half of the matrix, excluding the diagonal line. Okay, so in such a way, for three n equals three, three times two over two is actually three. It's actually three. So like this. So maybe you can also add this condition as i is uh, smaller than j. Otherwise, uh, maybe you can uh, you will calculate uh, one two two one, and then uh, it will be it will be repeated. Okay, so here is a sample problem. Sample problem. So here, uh, three point charges held in a fixed position by forces that are not shown. What is the electric potential energy U of this system of charges? Assume that D and then Q1, Q2, Q3, in which Q equals to this uh, value. Okay, so actually U equals U12 plus U1, uh, U23 plus uh, U31. Okay, so actually we have uh, three potential energy added together. So actually it is uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and then Q U12 is Q1, Q2 over uh, D uh, actually it's an equilateral triangle 等边三角形三个都是D所以我们也不用写什么 R12, R23 uh, and then plus uh, Q2, Q3 over D plus Q3, Q1 over D. Okay. So actually, 1 over 4 epsilon naught is uh, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th power. And then Q1, Q2. Q1, Q2 is uh, 1 times uh, negative 4. And then and then okay let's 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 write it like this uh, q1 q2 1 times minus 4 and then q2 q3 is negative 4 times 2 and then plus q3 q1 is uh, 2 times 1 okay and then over d d yeah actually we, we have not finished the q yet we have to calculate. Uh, we have to multiply by q square. Yeah, q square is one fifty times ten to the negative nine quantity square, and then over d d is this twelve centimeter. Twelve centimeter is zero point one two meter. Okay, so this number is uh, negative 1.7 times 10 to negative 2 joules. Okay. okay, so this is just a simple um, example to let you just simply apply the uh, formula in the previous page. So just uh, plug in all the number and then you, you get it back. Any questions? You may want to eat. Okay, so here we have an other sample problem. So here is set an alpha particle. So an alpha particle is a is a particle with two protons and two neutrons. Okay, so this is the alpha particle. So it just is like high. 那个是害原子的感觉 okay, So move into a stationary gold atom okay, 所以也有一个金的原子核 uh, So this uh, gold atom has uh, 79 protons and uh, 118 neutrons Passing through the electron region that surrounds the gold nucleus Like a shell and headed directly toward the nucleus Okay, so it just is all the uh 
这个 alpha particle 了 ，alpha 粒子的话就穿过了这个电子啊，就没有打到电子，就直接就朝向这个金的原子核啊奔向呃直奔而去了啊。OK， 所以呃，哦呀 ，So the alpha particle shows and uh slows ah、uh, slows until momentarily stop when its center is uh at radio distance r equals nine point two three femtometer. Okay, femtometer. Okay, hope you still remember what this uh uh scientific prefix is ah、uh, from the from the nuclear center. Then it moves back to uh move back along its incoming path, because the gold nucleus is much more massive than the alpha particle. We can assume the gold nucleus does not move. Okay, 他说就是这个金原子比起这个 alpha particle 了，就是重很多了。这个是一百九十，一百九，接近两百个，接近两百个 proton 的质量嘛。那这边只有四个了，那这边就远比那个重，所以就是就假设说，这个金原子从头到尾都不动的，那这个 alpha particle 啊，就是因为它带电的，它带电，它带两个正电，那这个就要带九七十九个正电，所以从最远处的时候，它呢没有没有那个什么 potential electric potential 嘛，或者 potential energy 嘛。所以他们越接近的时候，它就会有一个排斥力嘛，就是让它减速减减减到某个程度的话，它就会原路折返。OK、uh,。So what is、uh, what was the kinetic energy Ki of the alpha particle when it was、uh, initially far away, hence externally to the gold atom? OK。所以就问那个 kinetic energy 一开始是多少啊？ Uh, 来到这个位置就回去。呃，就是这个位置就跟它的原始的那个动能或者是原始的速度有关。Okay, assume that the only force acting between the alpha particle and the gold nucleus is the electrostatic force, Coulomb force. 就是，他就假设说没有做任何功，所以就会有这个呃 conservation of energy 的条件，就是能量守恒的条件。Okay, so actually we can we can apply the 呃、uh, Conservation of、uh, energy. So this is the、uh, initial mechanical energy. The K I plus U I equals K F plus、uh, U F. Okay. So actually, we will we will consider the initial.、Uh, the initial is at infinitely far away. So initially, U I will be zero. There is no potential. Uh, energy or、oh, yeah, no any、uh, electric potential at infinitely far away, and of course, ah,、uh, this one is the final point. Ah,、uh, this one is the final point, and for the final point, ah,、uh, this is more ah,、uh, this alpha particle is momentarily stopped and then go back. So at this, at this specific point, the Velocity is zero, so which means that the kf is also zero. The kinetic energy at at the point f is also zero. So here,、uh, in this formula, we already have、uh, two terms to be zero. So we only have、uh, ki equals uf. And、uh, actually, what we need to find is the ki. So here we have a ki equals uf.、Uh, uf. So actually, we know we know the R. So we may be able to calculate U F as one over four pi epsilon naught times uh Q one Q two Q one Q two, and then over this small R,、uh, this small R. Okay. So yeah. So this is something like uh this is uh K. So this is uh eight point nine nine times ten to the ninth power, and then times Q one Q two, oh, so this is one of it is、uh, two proton, one of it is seventy、uh, nine proton. So this is a、uh, two times seventy、uh, nine times one point six times ten to minus nineteen quantity square. Okay, so one of it is two two e two e and and another one is seventy、uh, nine e. Okay, so 
it turns out to be 2 times 79 times 1.6 minus 90 uh, quantity squared. And then the R is actually this one, 9.23F. F is, what is F? 10 to minus 15, femto. This is a femto, femto, femto meter, okay. Which is really, really, really short, okay. Yeah, because it is already much smaller than the radius of a of a of an atom. Yeah, because it already tells you that okay the 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 new uh, the electron cloud the 电子云在在外面，它已经穿过去直达这个大本营了。Okay, so actually this number is is three point nine four times ten to negative twelve. Joule. Okay, so actually this is a SI unit for the energy, and actually, and actually, uh, in for the particle physics, uh, we usually use an other unit rather than the joule. Although joule is a SI unit, and the unit we we usually use is not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so let's let's let's. Let's say uh, how to how to do this transformation. Okay, we will just divide this three point nine four times ten to negative twelve by one point six times ten to minus nineteen, which is the elementary charge. Okay, so this number is actually twenty twenty four point six times ten to the sixth power uh, times ten to the sixth power, and then we will use. Uh, uh, we will call this unit to be the EV. Uh, okay, and usually we will not we will not express it as a scientific uh, notation. We will actually uh, use a 24.6 mega EV uh, mega EV. Or if it is 10 to the 9 power, it will be giga EV. Okay. Uh, 物理学家就不喜欢一些很小的数字了所以他就除一个更小的数那电子伏特它的物理意义的话就是说我用我用一伏特的electric potential去加速一个电子去加速一个电子 它就会带有一个EV的能量 Okay, any questions? Okay, so so here we simply talk about the potential of a charge isolated conductor. Okay, so actually we already know this ex, uh, this expression. This is E equals uh, uh, negative dV dr uh, along the r axis, and also we know this is the um, yeah is the inverse operation. So which is like we integrate this E field, and then it will become the potential difference. Okay, so for example, in this figure, you can see, you can see, uh, suppose we have a, um, suppose we have a sphere, uh, we have a sphere, charge sphere, okay, okay, this is a charge sphere, okay, something like this, okay, suppose it, it has some charge on it, and then it will generate some E view, okay, so, so the E view will be something like this, which is uh, K times uh, 
uh, q over r squared. Okay, so this is this is the e field, and then inside the chart sphere, then the e field is is zero, is zero, something like this. And then if you like to um, take the uh, I mean take the integration, take the integration of it. Okay, so you try to integrate this one. So this part, this one will be will be flat, and then, okay, and then you start to integrate this um, r to the negative two power or one over r squared uh, multiplied by a constant, and then integrating one over r squared will be will be something like one over one over r. Okay, so actually this is like uh, v equals. Uh, k times uh, q over r, something like this. And of course, uh, for this integration, we have a negative sign. So even though you are, we are integrating some positive number, but this part is actually decreasing uh, due to the, the negative sign. Or it, on the other way around, you can just take the derivative Take the derivative. Uh, take the derivative of this uh, part. Uh, this is a constant. Taking the derivative will be zero. So here we have a e to be zero, and um, yeah, this is uh, proportional to uh, one over r, inverse proportional to r. And then if you take the derivative of uh, one over r, it becomes uh, something like a negative one over r squared. So this is also like. A, uh, 1 over r squared. Of course, with the negative sign, cancel with that negative sign. So this is a positive one. So yeah, somehow like this. And this part, uh, this picture would like to tell you that, okay, actually this is a, this is a, yeah, this is a car, yeah, with a guy uh, sitting inside. And uh, yeah, of course the, the co uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, actually it's a conductor and then, even though it is hit by the lightning, the, but actually the whole car is actually at the same uh, potential level. So which means that in such a way there is no current going through the guy. So this guy is safe. <laughs> it's just want to uh, explain something like this. So it, it said it's wise to enclose yourself in a cavity inside a conducting shell where the electric field is guaranteed to be zero. 就是说这个是一个金属的壳啦那金属的壳里面的话它就会有一个修顶的 因为电子的流动，通过一些电阻，它才会有所谓的能量。那没有能量作用在你的身体里面，就不会有被雷劈到的那个状态。Okay, so a car, unless it is convertible or made with a plastic body, ah, uh, is almost ideal. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay. So let us finish this, uh, yeah, this chap, this chapter like this. So so far, it looks like there are um, many many variables we have introduced. So it's like a horrible electrostatics. There are lots of variables: E view, electric potential, potential energy. So yeah. So actually, I just summarize uh, some of the variables here. Okay. So in such a way, in chapter 21, we have learned the electrostatic force. So which is like this, F equals K times Q1, Q2 over R square. Okay, so this is the Coulomb's force or the electrostatic force. And in chapter 22, we have learned the E view. So it's like E, time, e equals K times uh, Q over R square, Q over R square. Okay, so between these two uh, variables, F and E, we of course have the definition. Uh, 
the definition of it. E feel like E equals F over Q zero. So this is the relationship between these two. And uh, in chapter 24, we actually learned these two, chapter 24 for the, for the V and also the U. The V is the electric potential, the U is the uh, electric potential energy. Uh, the electric, electric potential energy. Of course, in this textbook, it just mentioned the potential energy, but yeah, actually, there are some other form of potential energy, like the gravitational potential energy. Yeah, so anyway, it's the uh, electric potential energy, U equals this thing. Okay, so here we have V equals K times Q over R, and the potential energy is actually U equals K times Q1, Q2 over R. Okay, so also in this chapter, also in this chapter, we know that uh, the potential, uh, the electric potential and the potential energy, uh, this is the potential, this is the potential energy, have this uh, relationship. Okay, so yeah, so horizontally they are easy, so it's just uh, proportional to each other. Uh so for the vertical formula between the E view and the V, okay, we actually have this uh, E equals the negative of gradient V or inversely we have a V is actually the negative of the integration of E dot DF from I to F. Okay, so actually these are the inverse operation which is like uh, if you calculate from uh, from the E field to the to the to the V, okay, so you use the this uh, gradient and then if you calculate V uh, calculate the E field by the V then you use this uh, line integral. And similarly for the F and U for the F and U Actually, for the F and U, they have a similar expression, a uh, similar relationship, which is like uh, this. Actually, this line integral is the work done. Uh, is the work done, and then taking the negative sign will be the uh, electric potential or the potential energy. Potential energy. Yeah. So this one also apply for the mechanical system, not necessary for the electric. Uh, uh, the electrostatic force or the Coulomb's force uh, it can also be applied for the mechanical system. Yeah. And or inversely, if you know the electric potential uh, or the potential energy, then you can, uh, or the potential energy field, then you can just take the negative of the gradient of this uh, potential energy, then you will get the, get the force, like the gravitational force, in also have. Uh, uh, this expression, okay. So horizontal, uh, so vertically, uh, the relationship is more complicated. We actually need to use the uh, integration of the or the derivative, or or we we'll say is a gradient in high dimension. Okay. So actually, uh, these four variables have this kind of uh, um, relationship. 